Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attacker Productions. Today I back up joined again by Jake and Aaron. What's going on, y'all? Hey, hey. In today's matchup, well, it's Jake versus Aaron. And these are actually two new decks for the channel, which is great. We got Aaron bringing what is now known as Seven Ku. It's the reboot, very first Goku leader, which is fantastic, versus Jake, who has brought us Bardock's crew. So a little blue and yellow. When you see those colors, you think this is going to be a long match. Well, let's find out. There's buttons down below. Feel free to click for their reasons, but let's get into the matchup. These are both so, new decks, so whoever wants to start yeah. this off, go right ahead. So I had seen uh, a couple of lists of Seven Coup, and I had played against it like once or twice on Untap, but I really had no idea in which direction Aaron was going to take the deck. So why don't you like talk a little bit about your Seven Coup list, Aaron? Sure, yeah. So, um, it, the thing with the game right now is being able to, like, have, like, a, like a boss monster that can finish the game. Like, there, every deck has that, it, you know. And I think that blue, blue just inherently kind of struggles with that um, to a degree. And so, when, when you look at 7 coup, you see on the backside it gains double strike. Um, and if you have 7 energy, then he gets crit. So, it's one of those things where you can sort of force your opponent to like overcommit and try to kill you like as fast as possible and then you know punish them with negates and all that kind of stuff. So what I wanted to do uh, was definitely pour into the archetypes. So you're going to see the Beerus, the Visitor, and the Weiss, the Visitor, which are the ramp. Um, but then really, other than that, it's just um, you know building around um, Gogeta. You know, so I put there's a lot of tools in, in this deck. Blue Art just kind of has those tools to deal with Gogeta and send Shenron, um, and then you can kind of splash a few things in here and there to deal, deal with yellow or green. So uh, that's kind of what this is, just blue good cards that handle the current meta. So nothing super spectacular, just good cards. Yeah, and the, the Z leader in that deck is pretty nasty too, if you can uh, get that thing going. Yeah, and it's something that, man, I just, this was my first time running it, and I, I have still uh, not quite mastered the timing on on the Z deck and other than like the cell and stuff like that because it's pretty easy to just board wipe your opponent. But um, you know the bringing that Z leader in um, is not something that I've been very good at, um, and so I definitely want to get some more playing in to bring him in because he's you're right it's just a double strike crit twenty k body uh, yeah. that can that can spend a blue energy to negate an attack. It's just everything you want, and so um, it's really strong. So that's a good point. So, uh, you know, you, you were playing uh, Bardock Crew here, and I had, I had built Bardock Crew and kind of played with it a little bit, and my deck, my version was a little bit less inconsistent than yours is. Yours is really kind of hits, hits it in stride here. So um, what do you think about Yellow Bardock Crew? Uh, is... <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Aaron, if you want to back up and rejoin us in a second, for some reason you got super techno on us. And while you're you're switching okay. oh. over quick, uh, I'll let Jake wow. talk about his deck. All right, so that okay, so uh, Bardock's crew is uh, overall. I, I think Bardock's crew is is more of a glass cannony uh, yellow deck than I would normally play, but you get rewarded for that with just like a ton of card draw, and having a pretty solid hand size is like something that's pretty decent this format i feel like so um that's just like kind of like an added bonus that basically every battle card you cast or at least the first one you cast every turn is going to draw you something and then it doesn't really matter like what you pressure with as long as you have like a really good draw engine like that and the the apes that they give you and just like the ways to that they cast them end up being pretty aggressively costed and then, of course, you can just, like, splash in the good yellow tech. So I think there's a, a sweet spot where you can get a little bit more of a defensive Bardock list, and maybe it can be a little bit more competitive than it has been. But I feel like it, it's kind of an overlooked, like, tier, like a B-tier kind of deck. Or maybe A, if S-tier is, like, the, the main decks in the format. This is probably maybe A-tier, a low A, high B or something. Yeah, I think so too, man. And, and after playing against it, hopefully my volume is better. Yes, um, it is. <laughs> uh, so after playing against it, man, I, I knew that it wanted to spit cards out, but what I did not realize was what you just mentioned was the straight-up draw power that this deck has. 
uh, between being able to just discard that fascia and find your pieces. And every time you play something, basically you draw a card, the Shigesh draws you a second card. Uh, so yeah, it's, it, your hand was pretty fat the entire, the entire game. And, and so I think that that's, I think that's what makes it that, like that mid A tier. I, I, I definitely think it's mid A. Um, and the fact that it's yellow is, it, you know, definitely what the pieces yellow has definitely keeps it there. So, so Fosh is very similar to like Turtle School like where I use a field card to free play a card to get a draw and then if I cover that card off it's going to like the Z deck uh, sorry Z energy Fosha you're activating the main and once you awaken you, can you just combo them from that point on so now they serve two purposes they're in your drop to be comboed with exactly uh, so the, the Fosha is really one of the better cards in the list because you can activate it for free it goes to the drop area and you grab another Bardock's crew. And just checking real quick, there isn't a restriction that keeps you from grabbing just another copy of Fasha to thin your deck again on your following turn. And then once you're awakened, like Bardock mentioned, you get the or like Bardock, like Bancroft <laughs> mentioned. Why, thank Excuse you. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, once you uh, are awakened, when you swing with the lead, you get to combo a Bardock's crew for free from your drop area. <laughs> And these Foshes will be in your drop area because that's what they're designed to do. And then from there, you put them in the Z energy. So you get uh, one, two, three, basically, uses out of each copy of Fasha. And uh, they're also good for uh, fulfilling your awakening requirement and your chucking under your eight drop as well. Just a really well-positioned card in the list. Yeah. Yeah, this was this was a the turn that I was that I was fearing because you know turn three for for Bardock is uh, is huge and so like when when you have three energy down man like it's I know you're gonna play a bunch of battle cards and I, I think I misplayed a little bit on my sec on like I think it's this turn um, I was digging really hard God ceiling technique because I had Android seventeen and eighteen unison in hand. And when I didn't get it, I think I just kind of gave up on the turn and, and just kind of did something stupid because I knew you were going to play that four drop Bardock and I wanted to be able to put everything back in your hand and make you play it again, like make you tap all of the energy to play it again or at least consider it. Yeah. And so, so not seeing not seeing God ceiling really, um, really put me in a bind here. And you and you certainly capitalized by taking me uh, taking me down to four life here. Yeah, and. Uh, getting to play these uh, battle cards in a juncture where you don't have a unison on the table kind of makes it worth going ahead and casting too, because really outside of Cell, there isn't too much that I'm worried about just like outright wiping my board here. And I, I think your Z energy is uh, maybe off camera, but I think you only have two at this point. So I know you're going to have to at least get some kind of attack through in order to board wipe and honestly with the amount of energy i've spent on these battle cards i'm okay with them going away also i don't know who did the sonic blast but yeah that was that was the only time that happened throughout the entire night that was wild hmm. we caught a spirit on camera or something <laughs> You've been through a scabbard longer than I have. Has he would die there? Um, no, but a guy that used to work there got struck by lightning twice there. So it's you know in like the same exact spot. So kind of weird. Okay, so, <laughs> so that is weird. So you you're yeah, so, you're on turn three. Yep, facing down a bunch of apes. Yeah, so you see me row the Rebirth of Justice there. Um, I was really hoping to draw, um, I sideboard in against Yellow, the 5-drop Frieza from a bunch of sets ago that when it's played, it negs 30, ignoring barrier to the board, and then mills. So, like, he has already drawn a billion cards. Like, he's got four dudes on, on the field. Like, that's going to be milling eight, and it's going to be, b like, board wiping him if I can see it. And I just didn't see it. Um and, you know, so I kind of just, like I said, I kind of just gave up on it. The other thing about it is that, like, in this game, I don't see any Zeno super combos until I think I just drew one, like, um, either out of life or something. I think I have one in hand here. 
And so you have to, that's my only beef about, about the seven coup deck is that if you don't see the Zeno super combo, you basically are just playing a, like a vanilla blue leader because you don't get any ramp and you really don't, not, nothing really, you don't really do anything. Nothing happens. So um, it makes it tough. And so I really, at this point, am kind of like, I, I mean, I know he's going to slam the eight drop at some point and I'm really trying to figure out what to do because, like I said, I really misplayed by not playing that 17, 18 unison uh, a turn ago and having it to dual attack and help me clear off some pieces. There's a guy ceiling. Um, yeah, they like dollar short. So that's, that's the thing about, about this deck. I was really curious about when I remember first seeing the cards for it. We're like, oh, how it's going to ramp. Okay, and we, we sell the beers. Like, okay, cool. hang on. Those don't restand. So yeah, you're forced to have to play um the Zeno super combos just so you can pick them back up and put them back put something else down in active mode um yep. but with that did you feel like the throughout the night the deck drew enough with Zeno super combos yeah i do because the weiss and the beerus both so the one drop weiss the visitor when you play it you draw the card and then you go get a beerus and then and then the beerus when you you can just tap a blue energy to just put it from your hand into your energy and rest mode and then draw another card so like they can trip both of them um and then so like i had a pretty healthy hand size the entire night um you know you really start to fizzle those out like you know turn like on like actual like game turn four and five and six um you really start to struggle there and and brian samuel who who finished fourth at a at a regional recently with this was running the draw apes and i did not want to put draw apes in here because Instead of the draw apes, I play the six drop, um, the six drop Super Saiyan God Goku. That is a is a three drop negate that is kind of a deadly defender. So I put that in instead as a, as a defense tool, um, because you know I guess like I said I figured that um, that I would have enough draw, but that was not the case. And we understand real quick for viewing purposes, you just missed the auto, and Jake allowed you to have the uh, the combo off the unison. Correct. Yeah. 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 Yep. I never played Gamma, and so, like, this Unison, like, this is the first time, and the reason why I'm using this Unison, rather than, I originally had the Hit Unison in here, um, because of the draw, and I think that the reason why, the big reason why I wanted to is because I want to use this Unison to fuel Z Energy, because Blue is very Z Energy reliant, uh, especially with the Cell and the 5-drop Vegito that I literally never play, um... Like so, I kind of want to keep my Z energy. But the other thing is, is that I play the six drop, or I was testing with the six drop Another World Blitz, um, which I also took out after this weekend, um, and uh, be, to try to keep the the drop free of battle cards because um, I don't run any overwhelm either. So if this was the first iteration of the deck, and there were some clunky things like that. I think I will switch over to the hit Unison for some draw. Uh, also, if I use his minus one and flip your leader. With Goku being plus 1k for every one of my energy, when I flip you, like I'm automatically up like 12 or 13k on you just with my double strike yeah. leader swing. Yeah, with no extra investment. Yeah, there was right. A, yeah. There was a yeah, game so played, that would have. I was like, there was a game where you played in the night where I think I saw you had like eight or nine energy. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah. And none of them were beers. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. The second round, um, I played against Gogeta, and it wasn't on camera, and I got up to 12 energy, and I actually hard-casted um, Overground uh, and was able to... Like, he couldn't play his entire deck. Like, none of the battle cards in his deck could land. Um, and so um, he basically... We kind of we played it out, and it took forever, but he there was nothing he could do. And so... Um, but I did see... The, and that's the difference, is that I did see all of my Zeno super combos. If you see two or three of them, it's... It's, it increases your winning probability by like 30%. So, but here again, just the, the aggression from this Bardock deck is just really good. I played that Goku kind of as like a last ditch effort. And I think it lost me the game here. No, spoiler alert. Um, because um, Jake is like, all these apes have are 20 K base. Um, and Jake did a really nice job setting up here um, to, I mean, just like masterfully, going through the defense that I that I thought that I had but I didn't um 
Did, did when when I played that, Jake, were you even anywhere remotely close to worried about being able to get through it? I I had a cooler in hand, and I thought to myself, I could probably kill this. I still had a dual attacker on board and plenty of stuff to combo off. And mm. then um, I was like, I'll save the cooler for the baby hatch. Not thinking about you actually play probably the new secret rare Goku in this right. deck. So yep. Um, <laughs> that's probably not something that uh, I should have really been worried about, and probably should have coolered right there. But if you think- if you coolered, I would have scooped. Yeah, I mean that that would have been game, just because I, I would have no open energy and nothing for you to go through. Um, or and it, you would have just, I mean, I, there's no way. Um, so, but I think I think both ways, like you slam this Bardock, this eight drop Bardock here. It's kind of hard to see, but that is the eight drop. That's the SPR Bardock. Uh, this is a quintuple attack, <laughs> like 40k. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. 30, it's so yeah. good. Um, and uh, it's and it. I had that trunks in hand, and I I, I just haven't played against Bardock, and I, I should have known it had deflect. But um, but yeah, it's just really dumb on my part for assuming it, it didn't. And it's one of those things where, like, on your previous turn, you could have tap three to play cell, and yeah, loop is filled, but. Yeah. this deck can recover like i think in one of my and jake's like test games or i think no i saw jake testing with chase uh like a, a week or two ago and chase successfully like destroyed jake's field yeah but it, oh, yeah. it didn't matter like he was able just to reestablish it just as quick and i was like damn that's, that's cool well that's why i didn't is because i knew that even if i even if i play that cell and i scoop up all of his dudes I was gonna have to win, and he only had four, so I did. I wasn't gonna get the triple strike, and I knew with for three energy, he is still spitting out five battle cards, and so I, I, I held it for that Goku. But man, great game, Jake. I mean, just really, really uh, masterful way of kind of digging through the blue defense there, and you killed me in just enough time because the next turn um, could have been tough. I had the oh, secret yeah. rare eight drop in hand, and and um, could go into all my combos and stuff. So really nicely played there, dude. Yeah, the, the thing about blue is when you see your window of opportunity, you just have to go for it. And unlike a lot of other colors right now, um, like deflect is very often enough. So uh, once I got through that big six drop, I, I, I knew just that I had to go for the, the quint yep. attack and try and end the game. Yep. So with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Keep in mind buttons down below. Feel free to go there for reason. And don't forget to put stuff in the comments. We try our best to respond. Jake, we lead us out. Uh, yeah, remember to read your cards, know your plays, let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to, excuse me, and fluff out.